Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to implement an AI chatbot that answers questions over your favorite podcast. Now, have you ever listened to a podcast and days later, you're like, what was that book that they were talking about? Or what was that software that they used that they said makes their life a whole lot easier? Or what was that link that they had at the end that I, I wanted to check out? Well, you're not the only one. Today, I'm going to show you how to use RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation with AI so that you can have your questions answered and you'll never have to remember any of this stuff ever again. All right, before we build this AI chatbot, let's go ahead and outline what we need to do. First, we're going to have to download all the episodes of our podcast. So in this example, I'm going to be using Marketing Secrets by Russell Brunson. Second, we're going to have to transcribe all of these episodes. Now, don't worry, we're not going to have to do that by hand. We are going to be able to use AI to generate a text transcription of the podcast. Third, we're going to have to add some metadata. So we're going to add a summary of the podcast and some topics. And last, we're going to create a vector store that's going to store all of this information so that our chatbot can use that to retrieve it. Now that we have our outline, let's go ahead and start building. All right, now before we start building our AI chatbot, I kind of wanted to go over how Retrieval Augmented Generation and RAG works. So you can see here in our graphic, we're going to be taking our podcast transcription text files. We're going to be chunking them and splitting them up. We're going to then store them in our vector store. Then when we run our chatbot, we're going to be taking the query. We're going to look into our vector store, retrieve the relevant splits. We're going to put those relevant splits into our prompt. And then we're going to prompt our large language model and our large language model is going to give us an answer. So that's a very high level basic overview of how retrieval augmented generation works. All right. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get all the podcast episodes that we need to download. And the easiest way I have found to do this is to get the podcast RSS feed. Now, a lot of podcasts have them because when they go to push to these multiple platforms, they use the RSS feed to do it. And one of the best ways I've found to accomplish this is to use libsyn.com and their directory to get the RSS feed. So here I have Marketing Secret Show pulled up on libsyn.com and I'm going to go to the RSS feed here and just click this button. I have it open in this tab and I'll go ahead and make it bigger so you guys can read it here on the screen. And as you can see, for each um, item, which is known as a podcast episode, uh, we have the title, we have the publication date, we have the MP3 URL, which is right here, and we have the author. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a Python script that is going to download this RSS feed, and then it's going to get the title, the author, and the MP3 URL for each episode. All right, so I have the Python script pulled up here, and I'll just walk through this code. So we're just going to import a few libraries here. We have requests, CSV, and the XML tree so that we can traverse the XML RSS feed. Uh, we're going to import the URL here of the RSS feed, and we're just going to download that URL. If we do not get a 200 good response, we're going to exit with an error. And then from there, we're going to parse all of the items in that RSS feed, which again is just the podcast episodes with all the metadata. And we're going to create a CSV file called episodes.csv. And for every item in that RSS feed, we'll get the title. And there was a little hiccup. I found that some of the titles were so long that they were cut off and they ended with either an ellipsis, three dots, or three dots and an exclamation point. So I just check if the title ends with that, I'll remove those last characters. And then we'll get the author from there as well. And we'll get the MP3 URL and we'll write it all to that CSV file and then we'll exit. All right, so now let's go ahead and run this in our terminal. And I'll just go up to the top here and hit terminal, new terminal. And we'll get the nice window down here. And you can see it automatically loads the Conda environment that I have loaded here at the bottom. And we'll go ahead and run Python get podcast.py. And you'll see it downloads and it will create our episodes.csv file which we have the title of the episode, the author, and the MP3 URL for all of the episodes for the podcast. All right, so now that we have all of the podcast URLs, the next thing we need to do is download all of the podcast episodes. So I created a file called download episodes underscore MP3, and I'll walk you through that. 
So the first thing here is we have a function that sanitizes the file names. So in a lot of the titles, they have exclamation points, slashes, and random characters that are illegal in file names. So what we do is we just check the array if any of the characters in the file name are in that array, and we just replace them with an underscore. And then we're gonna take our episodes.csv file. I do have hard coded in here. We're gonna make sure that that exists. If not, we're gonna exit with an error that the file does not exist. We'll open that CSV and we'll read it and we'll output to a directory called podcast episodes. And basically what we'll do is for every row, we'll get that uh, podcast URL. We'll get the title, which is the file name uh, without all of those special characters. And then we'll go ahead and we'll check if a file already exists. If it does, we'll skip that download. If it does not, we'll go ahead and download it using request.get with the mp3 URL and stream equals true. And then we'll go ahead and open that file name and chunk it using the size of 49, 4096. And then we'll write to that file. And then when we're done with all of them, we'll just print download it all mp3 files. So now I'll go ahead and open terminal and I'll go ahead and run this. So we'll do python download episodes underscore mp3.py. We'll hit enter. And as you can see, it skipped them all because I've already downloaded them. If you want to go ahead and run this yourself, you can download them. It took me about 20 minutes. And now we'll use AI to build a vector store and we'll start working on our chatbot. All right, so now that we've downloaded all of the MP3s and we have all of the podcast episodes, our next step is we need to transcribe them so that we can chunk all of the text and store them in our vector store for our large language model to look up and use as context. And what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna show you how to translate all of the, transcribe these, all of these for free uh, using Whisper locally. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna import OS and we're gonna import Whisper, which is made from OpenAI. And we're gonna load the base language model, uh, transcription model, which there's a bunch of different ones. There's tiny, there's small, there's medium, there's large. Base is kind of a good smaller model that is pretty accurate from what I've seen. We're going to create our transcription directory called podcast transcriptions. And if that's not there, we'll just create it. And then in our podcast episodes, we'll grab all of the files that end with mp3. We'll get the number of those files. So we have something to show on the progress. And then we'll get the title. We'll make the transcription file name the title.txt. And if it already exists, we'll skip that. If it doesn't exist, we'll go ahead and we'll run model transcribed using the uh, mp3 path and we're gonna pass in a couple options here I have FP, I have fp16 set to false and that's because I'm on a Mac and I cannot do fp16 uh, it needs to do fp32 and it uses my CPU and we're just gonna add in that the task is transcribed because it can also translate but that's not what we want to do here and then we'll go ahead and we'll open that file and we'll write the results and then when we're done with all of them, we'll go ahead and print out that everything is done. So again, I'll open my terminal here and I will run python transcribe underscore episodes dot pi and I'll hit enter. And then now this takes a while, but as you can see, I already have transcribed all of the episodes, all 642. Uh, if, when you're running this the first time, it's going to download the model, which is going to take a while. And then it's also going to transcribe all of your episodes, which will also take a while. For me on a Mac, it took about 16 hours. So now that we have our transcriptions for all of the episodes, what we're going to do is we're going to start working on our AI chatbot. All right, now before we begin building our AI chatbot, I wanna go over the different methods that we're gonna use for retrieval. Now, the first method that we're gonna use here is just the basic stuff documents method. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take the query from the user we're going to then search our vector store for the relevant documents that we stored in our vector store. And we're just going to stuff those into the prompt. So our final prompt will end up being the query from the user and then a context section, which will contain all of the relevant documents that we return from our vector store. And then with this giant prompt, we're going to send it to our large language model. And our large language model is going to answer the question based on the information that we stuffed into the prompt. All right, the second 
method of retrieval augmented generation or RAG that we're going to be going over is the refined documents chain. And basically for this one, we're still going to be stuffing context into the prompt, but we're going to be doing it for every single piece of information that was returned from our vector store. So we're going to take the query from the user and we're going to get our relevant documents from our vector store. And for the first one, we'll just stuff the information in context. So our full thing will be the question, which is the query from the user. There'll be no intermediate answer for the first one. And then we'll have our context, which is the documents. We'll send that to the model. Now we'll do the exact same thing, but we'll do it again. So we'll say, we'll get the query for the question. The intermediate answer will be the answer we just generated. And the context will be that next document that we returned from our vector store. And we'll keep doing that for the number of times for the number of pieces of information that we return from our vector store, which you can customize and which I'll show you in a little bit. So those are the two methods that we're going to be going over. There's also a couple others. There is map reduce and there is map rewrite. So I suggest you take a look at those two other methods and see which one works best for your application. Now let's dive into the AI chatbot. All right, so let's look at the code for building our AI chatbot. First, we're going to import a ton of different libraries, mainly from Langchain, a couple um, imports from Pickle and some other Python libraries, and the QGrant client as well. And that's the vector store that we're going to be using. So I know Chroma is a very popular one, as well as Meta's FAISS, uh, but we're going to be using QGrant for this tutorial. And we're also going to import our embeddings from Plugin Face, as that is one of the better models for text transcriptions. Now, the first thing is we're just gonna check for our argument on the command line. So we expect a query to be passed in, which is the question that we're gonna ask about the different podcast episodes. And we're gonna have a document class here that just contains the content of the document and the metadata. Now, one of the issues with RAG and retrieve augment generation is that it can be very hard to find the relevant pieces of information. So if we add metadata to the content, we can help our search be better by generating shorter summaries of the podcast episodes and topics that the podcast episode is related to as well. And I'll show you that in a minute. The other function we have here is to load pickle files from a directory. So this will come in handy after we create the summary and the topics from our large language model. And basically we don't because this process is going over hundreds of episodes, we want to save this information, we don't want to lose it, and we don't want it to run as a one-time process or run every single time. So we're going to save it as a pickle file. And the other function we have here is a pickle to document. So basically just reading these pickle files and transforming them into a document. The next thing I have here are just some constants based on our Llama CPP, um, Llama CPP framework that we're going to use. I'm on a Mac, so Llama CPP works really well. I can offload it to the GPU. If you were on a NVIDIA and Windows machine, you might want to use Transformers by Hugging Face. It all depends. You can also use Llama CPP on Windows as well. It's not just related to Mac, but you may need to mess with some of these settings. So we're going to be using the Llama 2 13B chat model, and we're going to give it a context size of 4096. We're going to batch it to 256 and we're going to give it 12 threads to run. We're going to give it the path to our vector database, which I'm just calling QGrant, and just give it the path to our models directory and the actual model itself. And here you can see we're loading the Llama CPP, the large language model through Llama CPP. Next thing we're going to do is we're just going to load the documents. So that's just going to look in our podcast transcriptions directory and load all of our pickle files. If we don't have any pickle files, we're going to load the text transcriptions and create the pickle files. So once we have our documents, if it's less than the number of podcast episodes, we're going to go ahead and generate the information. We're going to go ahead and generate the metadata that we need for all of our episodes. We're going to go ahead and generate the metadata that we need for all of our episodes. So if it already exists, we'll skip it. If not, we're going to generate summaries and topics for the document. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the page content that's going to be the transcription from our file. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use Llama 2 to generate a summary based off of the transcription. So I'll show you what that looks like. 
basically we're going to pass in the model and we're going to pass in that transcription and we're going to chunk that transcription in chunks of 500 with 50 overlap and that's because most of the transcriptions could be from like hour-long episodes and we're not going to be able to pass that in as one prompt here is the prompt for the summary and then we're just going to go ahead and for each of the chunks we're going to generate a summary of it and then once we have all of those summaries we'll generate a summary from all of those and we'll have one good summary and then we'll return that summary and we'll add it to the metadata somewhere. We're going to do the exact same thing for topics. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the large language model and we're going to take in that summary we just generated and we're going to make sure that the summary is less than our context window and if it's not we're going to go ahead and chunk it and if it is we'll just use that for the prompt. And so what we'll do is we'll pass in this prompt here We'll generate the prompt template. We'll make sure it all fits with the right context window size. And then we'll just run that chain and generate three topics that are relevant to the podcast episode. And again, we're saving that in the metadata under topics. And then we'll get our title and author from our episodes.csv from earlier. We'll just take the file name and match up which one is the closest to the title. And we'll take the author from the CSV as well. And then. For each of the podcast episodes, we're going to do this. So it's also going to take a long time to run. I think it took around 13 hours on my Mac Studio. Once we have all of our pickle files created and all of our metadata and content, we're going to create our embeddings. So here I'm using the Sentence Transformers All Empty Net Base V2, which is a very good text um, embedding model. And I have the keyword arguments here for an apple. So if you're on Windows, you're going to want to change this to, if you're using NVIDIA, I think it's CUDA, so cut up. Um, and if not, you can just comment it out and leave a blank if you are not sure. Uh, and then you just comment it out from this line here below. So then we'll create our embeddings and then we'll go ahead and we'll create our vector store. So what we'll do is we'll load all of our pickle files and we'll check if our vector store already exists. If it does, we'll load it. If not, we'll go ahead and create it. So we'll call QGrant from documents. Our documents are our splits that we just created from our pickle files. We have our embedding model. We have our path to our where we want to store our vector database. We have the collection name, which I just hard coded as marketing secrets since that's the podcast that I use as the example and we won't recreate it every time that this is called. And I just did a little timing here so that we can see how long that it takes. I think to create it, it took about four minutes and to load it, it takes like half a second. Now we'll get into the fun stuff. All right, before we get started showing you the retrieval methods, what I wanna show you is max marginal relevance because this is the method that we're gonna be using to retrieve our documents. When we search our vector store for the relevant information based on our query, we're going to get 50 of them. And then we're going to ask max, maximum marginal relevance to give us a confidence score on how relevant they are to the query. And then we're gonna ask it to give us the top eight based on that score. And there is a fancy algorithm that you can see here, uh, but luckily for us, Langchain does this all under the hood. So now we'll go back to the code and I'll show you how to implement this. All right, so now we have our retriever and we're going to be using our vector store here and we're going to say our retriever is going to be search type MMR, maximum marginal relevance. And for our search keyword arguments, we're going to fetch 50 documents that are relevant to our query, use the top six, which is the K value, and then the mult is how diverse we want these return uh, documents to be. Do we want them to be super creative or do we want them to kind of uh, stick to the query? So I have a value of 0.3 here. If you want only things extremely relevant to the query return, you can use a lower number. If you want more diverse results, you can use a higher number. And then we're going to create our prompt template here, which again is going to have our system message, our context, and then our query. And then we're just going to run this retrieval chain. So it'll be similar to that image I showed earlier for the stuffing method. We'll run the query, 
will stuff the context into the prompt and then our large language model will generate an answer based off of the information stuffed into the prompt. So let's see what that looks like. All right, so I have the terminal pulled up and now comes our moment of truth. So I have my Conda environment activated and we're going to type in Python main.py and we'll pass in our query. What is funnel hacking up? And then you'll see it load through Llama CPP on our screen and you'll see it load the embeddings model and you'll see it load our vector store and it'll go ahead and prompt our large language model. And now you can see our output and pretty good answer. Funnel Hacking Live is an event that combines a personal development experience with a marketing event. It is hosted by Russell Brunson, the founder of ClickFunnels, and offers attendees the opportunity to learn about successful marketing strategies while also undergoing a transformative personal development journey. The event features a variety of speakers, workshops, and activities designed to help attendees grow their business and improve their lives. So now what I'm going to do is go over the other method that I showed earlier, Refine, and we'll see if that gives us a better answer as it goes through all of the documents that I return and generates an answer from each one and then generates an answer based on the sum of all those answers. All right, so back to our code editor. Now, instead of using the chain type as stuff, we're just going to type in Refine and LangChain under the hood will prompt our model for us using their own prompts. Now, if you want to customize those prompts, you can do that, but that is not what we're gonna be covering in this tutorial. So now let's hop over to the terminal and we'll run our large language model again with the same question and see if we get a slightly different answer. And here you can see that it's running multiple prompts. So this is one prompt, this is a second prompt, this is a third prompt, and it's going to continue down for all six of the documents that we fetched, just like in the graphic that I showed earlier. All right, so see we got a much longer answer. I'm not going to read through all of it, but I will read through the first couple of paragraphs. Funnel Hacking Live is an event hosted by ClickFunnels that brings together entrepreneurs and marketers who are part of the funnel hacker movement. The event features training sessions, networking opportunities, and a sense of community among attendees who share a passion for building and optimizing sales funds using ClickFunnels software. So here you can see that this method gave us a more robust answer. And basically for your application, you just have to choose what is right for what you're trying to accomplish. If you like this tutorial and you like this content, please go ahead and consider subscribing below. And if you have any ideas for a future video, please go ahead and leave a comment. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.